assalamu alaikum welcome to this uh, session chapter number 2 so it begins from the 19th century scholar william von homburg divided all the languages of the world into three types inflectional agglutinative and isolating so <laughs> this classification is not comprehensive and uh, a language cannot be uh categorized in this uh, classification because uh, some of the language have either two or more than two i mean all three characteristics and for for instance english has all three characteristics so thus a language cannot be divided on the basis of classification so it is what is described in this uh, text an example of isolating language is chinese because it has no morphology and this is not a very useful classification of languages as a whole for two reasons one is it only covers the aspect of language means word formation secondly most languages have characteristics of all three types uh, a better example of an agglutinative language might be turkish so classical greek was highly inflectional and there are some certain examples i mean i lose identifies no less than five categories i mean it uh, reflects or uh, it represents person first person second person third person similarly so here it is first person number singular tense present and mood indicative and voice active so in this sentence i lose in english there are words showing all three types uh, for instance prepositions by near to they are all invariable and they belong to isolating language another example see and saw shows inflection and then certain forms of the verb love loves loved loving and they fall in the category of agglutination so this division into inflectional agglutinative and isolating cannot be a division of language types but only of morphological characteristics of parts of languages so traditional grammars they deal with morphology like word or per or paradigm approach in paradigm approach we find i love do loves he loves we loves so certainly certain pronouns and then the verbs according to the verb subject agreement rule so these are applied so this is a paradigm next grammar is not only the matter of morphology it also deals with syntax i mean in which the words are particular word classes are combined to form a larger construction of sentences so this is a matter of syntax that we say birds sing rather than sing birds it means it is a syntax which enables a speaker or a writer to write a correct standard and grammatical uh you know writing and uh, a standard way of uh, writing and uh, uh formal or informal speech uh the proper word order so similarly soon saw happily john so soon saw happily adverb verb again adverb this adverb showing the time this adverb showing the manner 
and John is the noun and it should be the subject. So how I mean uh, it is not properly arranged. The word or order is disturbed here. So it might be like John saw Bill. It may be different from Bill saw John because uh, sometimes a, a subject has taken the place of an object and object has been replaced with subject. So a little more certainly there's a joke about time flies. So the meaning uh, you can't fly, they fly too fast. So this shows that there are two possible constructions either non-verbs or verb nouns because both time and flies can either verbs or nouns. So similar example is another headline British bitter wings in Europe. It is about the success of bitter ale or about some unhappy victories in football. It depends upon whether bitter wing is a noun and a verb or adjective and a noun. So ultimately it may be defined according to the context in which these words were used. So since these all matters of syntax, it follows. So now it is, syntax has gained much prominence to be studied than the morphology. This is reflected in the length of chapter number four and chapter number five. And a more specialized type of syntax is that which is concerned with concord and environment. So concord and environment and the next phase we are going to study. So in both the sentences, morphology as well as syntax uh, have been considered. So these morphosyntactic categories are not involved in all morphological variations. For instance, catty is morphologically related to cat and is so treated by the dictionary. But diction does not involve conquered or government. We may similarly relate fam, famous, man, manhood, serene, serenity, black and black. So relations of this kind are dealt with under derivation. This is usually contrasted with inflection. So now it is very important. I mean there may be a thin line between uh, inflection and derivation. But however, there are some certain very clear examples through which we can understand what a derivation is. Defining features of derivation. First, inflectional features involve only one word class because the dealing with inflection, it requires only one word class. Uh, like prefixes, suffixes, adding s, maybe uh, uh, apostrophe, and uh, it may be the form of verbs. So the same single you know, word in the same class, write, writes, wrote, written, writing, derivation of changes the word class. I mean, it may change from non to verb, from verb to non, and from non to adjective. Secondly, there is much greater irregularity in both and, and the formal uh, pattern and meaning relations. So the question arises here, how derivation is different from inflection? Define characteristics of derivation. So there are, uh, we have already discussed this one, so it may be studied by you. So there are some few examples. Similarly, on semantic side, because derivation may also be uh, taken as a semantic. Uh, the suffix able has a variety of meanings. Drinkable, that can be drunk. Commandable, that should be commanded. And readable, that can easily be read with pleasure. And knowable is naturally without. Some able words, for instance, formidable, 
cannot be analyzed into further elements, either morphologically or semantically. So for these reasons, the natural place to deal with derivation is dictionary. So the dic dictionary is the uh, most important or very appropriate source uh, to deal with uh, such type of words uh, and particularly um, uh, the derivation. And that's all for today. In my upcoming video, parts of speech uh, will be taken up. Please leave your comments which are very invaluable for me as feedback to my uh, efforts. Uh, thank you very much.